but mm -hmm. almost every one of our senses are mechanical, you know, mm -hmm. if, if that makes sense. So I'm palpating someone and I, and I'm taking a tissue to length. There's a normal feeling when a tissue goes from short to long. And the mm -hmm. normal feeling is, is there's very little internal tension to be felt until mm -hmm. you start to get to the last third. And then mm -hmm. you'll have this kind of nice gradual uptick of tension. Mm -hmm. And we even know from studies that take um, tissue samples and they, they pull them at length and then they measure the stress strain. Mm -hmm. We know that for every, for every amount of pull you put into a tissue, the amount of stress and strain is going to go up by one. So it's going to go one strain, one stress, one strain, one stress. In other words, all connective tissues have a one-to-one -one ratio such that when they're being brought to length, that mm -hmm. gradual rise of tension, um, we, we often talk about it, it's like an escalator. It's, yep. it's a gradual rise, getting higher and higher and higher until the end range where it peaks, and then you have that plateau. Mm -hmm. That's normal. Mm -hmm. All tissues respond the same. So now with regards to mechanically sensing or mechanical sense, what are we teaching when we're teaching someone how to palpate? Of course, we're talking about isolate the structure, what structure you want, exactly, you know, what depth, et cetera, et cetera. But once you're there, mm -hmm. it's a matter of trying to understand those stress strain curves of each tissue. Yep. Do I find nice escalator in increases in tension coming mm -hmm. back at my fingers as I'm moving the tissue to length or mm -hmm. do we feel elevators where it starts off and then boom yep. it just yep. jumps right up and now tension tension so now before the end range i get this rapid increase in tension mm -hmm. now that doesn't necessarily mean the the range of motion will be limited if there's right. tension within this line of the bicep right. the other areas will allow that range of motion to be acquired but if mm -hmm. I start to feel aberrant tension within a normal range of motion before mm -hmm. these end ranges or tensions found there's there's something there but let's just general there's something there right with proper force inputs to counter it over time will change the dynamic of that tissue such that it will return back to the normal one to one ratio mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's as simple yeah. as as I can explain the concept of trying to palpate and then trying to analyze if there's aberrant tissue. Now, what are these changes? This is another argument, um, but we know from injury that when you have injury, when you have a, a reduced amount of, of ability to achieve length over time, that the organization of the connective tissue becomes more haphazard. Mm -hmm. And and we know by palpating people post injury that that feeling, yeah, oftentimes feels exactly like the feeling that I'm trying to teach. So yeah. we can make a, a a conclusion based on first principles that that tension mm -hmm. is probably, and I'm going to put a pin in this, is probably due to an abnormal architecture in the connective tissue that if forces are applied subsequently in the proper ways can reverse that problem. Now, otherwise known as fibrosis. Otherwise known as fibrosis. Now, yeah. is that an adhesion? No. Am I feeling for adhesions? No. Am I feeling for scar tissue? No. I just finished saying that I have no scar tissue receptors on the palm, the, the pads of my fingers. I can't, oh, there's a piece of adhesion. I can't, a, a piece of adhesion is arguably a piece of collagen that's you know, nanometers in diameter. I can't feel those things, but I can feel forces mm -hmm. and I can improve my hand's ability to feel force, mm -hmm. which your haptic ability is a trainable quality. It is 100% yep. a fact that if you try to get better at palpating and you apply the, the, the exercises, you will get better at palpating, mm -hmm. says neurology. I'm going to get back though, because there are nuances that feeling that you felt isn't necessary, you know, with regards to length, it could also be a neurological problem. Yep. Right. Whereby the nerve, it's not that there's aberrant tissue um, quality, but it could be that the nervous system is just over excited and is putting too much motor input to that tissue. But mm -hmm. those things are going to come across very different to a trained practitioner. Right. So there's oftentimes there's a, re a complete reduction in range of motion, but it's reduced in, in a way that as I move, the entire muscle is very spastic or re reactive. The entire muscle is mm -hmm. blocking that end range of motion. 
right? Mm -hmm. And that's a completely different thing that we will we'll talk in functional range release about. Is it mechanical tension stemming mm -hmm. from fibrosis or assumed fibrosis, or is it neurological tightness stemming from abnormal uh, neurological discharge, which can happen if pain is continued for long periods of time, it can happen with acute injury. Um, you know, there's a difference between spasm versus tightness that yep. needs to be understood. And, and really when we're talking about functional range release and the course and functional palpation and what we, that's really what we're getting at. How do you make these assessment decisions from a manual standpoint? And then how do you apply forces in order to counter that problem over time? 